Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here at Lighthouse Baptist Church. We're so happy to have y'all here. I hope y'all have had a great week so far, and I hope that you continue to have a good week. Um, something exciting to share with you. Um, I think this is exciting, but you might think it's kind of silly, but it's okay. Um, I heard this song on the radio because I like to listen to 88.3, which is a Christian radio. Some of you might know it. Um, I heard this new song. It's by Crowder, and it's called Grave Robber. And it's a Christian song. Now, it's not necessarily, it's not really something, you know, you would typically hear on a Wednesday evening. It's it's not really a Southern gospel. It's more of like a contemporary. But I would encourage each one of you to go look up that song because it is amazing, and I don't think you'll regret it. You won't regret it if you do. Okay. So, the little, it's called, it's called, Grave Robber by Crowder. And, okay, little public service announcement there. But um, <laughs> we are going to be on page 339, and we are going to sing the first and the last verse of All Fly Away. So if y'all would stand, and we'll sing that song. <clears throat> Some glad morning this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. going to turn over to the next page and we're going to be on page 341 and we're going to sing the first and last verse of love lifted me <clears throat> i was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore very deeply stained within sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters lifted me now safe am i love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me completely saves he will lift you by his love out of the angry waves he's the master of the sea billows his will obey he your savior wants to be be saved today love lifted me love lifted me and nothing else can help Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. Terry asked me to do this, and I'm not comfortable standing in front of anybody, so um, I'm sure everybody can see me, right? 
<laughs> anyway, um, I'd like to take a few minutes to brag on Jesus, if y'all don't mind. Uh, <clears throat> November, middle of November to the middle of January, I have to go to Bristol and work so I don't get to be here on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. But while I was up there, there's hundreds of people come through every night, and uh, I got to talk to a lot of people. I must have had Jesus wrote on my forehead or something because there's a lot of people start talking about Jesus and so I got to share a little bit of that talk with them and uh, there was one guy his name was Bill Malone he was in his 70s and uh, he started talking to me about he got saved in 1975 became an alcoholic went back to the Lord and got back out in the world and he said I drank and drank and drank and one day um, he heard a message about worry and about casting your cares upon Jesus and all that and he went to his wife he told her he said we I got to get back in church and she told him that she had lymphoma they diagnosed her with lymphoma so he said instead of worrying about it they started praying about it and uh, wasn't long before they were both back in church regular and all this and she'd go to di different doctors and um, he shared with me you know that he was an alcoholic and he'd always be an alcoholic but uh, said that when they go from um, hospital to hospital they would tell them you know there's no no cure there's nothing we can do for your wife but he refused you know to listen to them and so he took her back to the hospital I think it was in Vanderbilt where uh, Perry and Miss Debbie's at and uh, doctors came in, they done some tests, MRIs, didn't find any cancer. And they've been fighting that for like seven years. And, uh, but don't get your hopes up, don't get excited about it. We're gonna do some numbers and the numbers don't, don't lie. So they did the numbers, came back and she is cancer free, still cancer free. But I told him that I'd always bring his name up in prayer because he said, I pray that I can continue to be sober. He started mess, uh, going over to his family, uh, friends. They'd invite him over to, to eat. And, and this is what the enemy does. Uh, they'd be drinking wine. And well, you know there's nothing wrong with drinking wine. So he eventually got back into drinking and become an alcoholic again, you know. He said, don't ever let anybody tell you that it's right, because it's not. But anyway, his name was Bill Malone. Then there's another guy who came up to me and uh, he didn't give me his name. Him and his wife have been on drugs their whole life, pretty much since they've been married. Um, he had a hat on it that said, um, Jesus Believer, something like that. And I got talking to him. And uh, I said, so you're a soldier for Christ? He said, yes, sir, I am. He said, he's done a lot for me. And I said, well, tell me what he's done for you. He said, well, me and my wife both hooked on everything. For seven years, he said, we've been straight. So, and uh, I can tell you one more. I love bragging on Jesus. Amen. This man, his name is Virgil Arnold. I've done work for him and his family for years. Came to my garage. Frank was down there the other day. And uh, talked to that, that man today. He's 86 and a half. And I said, Virgil, when was it when you got saved? He said, in 2000. And he said, I tell you what, I wish I'd done a long time ago. This man's pretty good health. Uh, still driving and everything. Talked to him today, and I said, uh, you said you was alone. I said, did you lose your wife? He said, oh, honey, he said, she died in 2022. He got saved in 2000. He said, they heard the message, walked down the aisle holding hands, him and his wife, both got saved the same day. But he said, and this, well, I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say. He said, 2022 was a rough year. He said, I lost my wife. I went blind for a little while, all these different things. And I, I've had this on my heart for a while. We've all got giants in our life. I heard a preacher preach on this and it's just been on my heart. But you remember the story of David, right? 
He ran toward the enemy, the giant. He had faith in God. And I think about that. We all got a little shepherd boy inside of us. He's prepared us. He's equipped us to fight the enemy. And every one of us have a story. Every one of us. And uh, I just have that, had that on my heart, you know, that we all got problems. And, uh, but there's a shepherd in all of us. You know, and, and in Jude, it says to contend for the faith, earnestly contend for the faith. And your message last Sunday, it, just I had to say what I got to say tonight. Because uh, in Jude, it says to earnestly contend for the faith. That means to fight. If an athlete's going to run a marathon, he's got to start somewhere, and he's got to push himself continually because he's the only one that can do it. And uh, that's the way it is with us. We've got to contend for the faith, fight for it. So uh, I wanted to say that before I started reading this prayer list because God needs some glory. He does. We need to give it to him. But uh, well, I'm going to read this list best I can. Danny Hicks, Dustin Woods, Chris Wallers, Bobby T uh, Poss, Marvin Roller, Mike Garst, Charman Mitchell, Sharon Taylor, Jenny Fisher, Alina Roller, uh, Emmy Mosley, Geraldine Dye, Tyler Lloyd, Randy and Myra, Ricky and Kathy, Anita, Josh and Megan, Anthony, Ezra and Sora, Tristan Bells, Andrew Bailey, High Fine Family, Joel and Garst, Haley and Blake, grandchildren, Sharon and Reese, Megan and Keith, Julie and Caleb, Alex, Jade, and Am Amara, Tracy and Heath, Linda and George Smith, Hughes family, Ellis family, Davis family, Oliver family, Rick Hughes, B.J. Howe, Michael uh, Campbell family, Candy and Bob Roberts, Herb Smith, Theresa and Robert Bailey, Andrew Thomas, Ed and Joanne, Steve and Lisa, Pauline Clark, Judy Bebito, Betty Villar, Villier, uh, Deli Garst, Autumn and Justin, Shea Holder, Jake Holder, Dustin Loughran, Russell Ladd, Mike and Bay, Tammy's Girls, Larry and Gail, Alan and Jessica, Rosemary and Peggy, Josh and Haley, Mike and Violet, Ricky and Amy, Pat, Barbara, Beverly Pitt, Tyler, Frank and Judy, Alan and Sandy, Taylor, Israel in Jerusalem, Kathy McCoy, Sandy Slark, I am Debbie Harrell, Raina Cloyd, Rob, uh, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Murr, Brenda Dickey, Sammy Combs, Tony Little, Bobby and Family, Arthur Jones, Judy Jones, Church Family, Deacons, Hunter Eastep, Taylor Tester, Kenny Garland, Jeff Toth, Cindy Eastep, Virginia Milhorn, Josh and April Bowman, Caitlin Bowman, Josh. Joshy Bowman, Barbara Cooper, Roger Miller, Pat Miller, Lost Family, Nancy McCarthy, Nancy Stover, Carol Parker, uh, Danny Francis, Jeremy Bre Breedson, Dana Rogers III, Mary Jane, Brenda Will and Chad, Tommy Moody, Jason and Jerry, Tim Ford, Pearl and Leslie, Veronica and family, Tony and Judy, Babe and Alice, USA and the Troops, Anna Calvin Hyder, Anna Ray, Judy Fleming, Jack and Frey, and Faye, Bracken family, Billy Ray and Kathy, Ernie, Kenneth, Tom and family, Ann and family, Wayne and Sandy and AJ, missionaries, teacher and students, Anna, Peggy, caregivers, parents of divorce, children of divorce, personal witness, business decision, uh, Wayne, Mr. Perrette there, that's Wayne, uh, Carolyn's husband, um, took him back to the get his test results today and they weren't good so you guys pray for Wayne and uh, he was telling somebody the other day before he went in for his surgery that his family his church was praying for him so he don't come here but he still calls you all his family so uh, that's that's a good thing he says he's saved so but uh, family Chelsea Colleen Grace Beverly Roger Duncan Tim Becker Joanne John and Sarah Fagan Mindy Fagan, Tracy Fagan, Lindsey Flish, Kayla Edwards, Brian Pelagia, Jeff Wilson, uh, Caleb, Jacob and Maggie, Pastor and Miss Debbie, then the unspoken is 
Dave Painter, Dana Hall, Raymond Francis, Tammy Cloyd, Karen Stevens, Lynn and Lauren, and Phyllis Hughes. And I'm sure y'all got a bunch, and if I can't hear you, I'm sorry, because I'm about deaf. But uh, pray for my Angie. She's, she had that surgery the 26th of December, and she's been out of the house three times, um, had pneumonia. She's still sick, so keep her in your prayers. Rodney said his Angie was sick. Tammy? His mother. Bath. Thank you. 
world full of apost apostate apostasy today and the Gnostics and Gnosticism and uh, just the full stuff in the world today. Preachers are falling away. Uh, you hear them stuff about them all the time. Just people, you, a friend of mine preaches all over the place and he goes in churches, people would sit in the front row and he said, don't know where they're at. And uh, so contend for that faith. Pray every day for one another. And we don't usually do this, but I'd ask him to do it because I need some help up here. If we, I mean, every time everybody comes to this altar and prays, it just makes me feel warm all inside. So I'm, I'll pray, but I'd ask some of you to just come if you can. And let's just pray for all these people. I mean, my brother-in-law's in bad shape. Um, he had cancer, and they found out that they didn't get it all. So um, a lot of people sick. So I try to be strong for my family. I try to be strong for people and pray for them. And, but I get tired. I get weak. It's a constant battle every day. And I know you guys are going through the same thing. But I love it when we come to the altar. I really do. Uh, I know you can hear you pray wherever you're at, but there's something about getting on your knees at the altar. Miss Debbie and Perry, you know, they try to stay, they stay strong for us, and they're traveling again and hoping that she can get better. And you can call out their names. All these people that we mentioned, you don't have to remember them all. Just pick one and pray for that person. Heavenly Father, we come to you because of what you did for us on that cross. You made it possible for us to, when you ripped that veil, when we pray, you hear us. And I'm thankful for that. We can come together on a Wednesday night and block out all this worldly stuff that we listen to every day and just come to you boldly on bended knees and humbly come to you knowing that you hear us and you'll grant these, these prayer requests that we lift up to you. And I pray that you'll intervene in these people's life, the people that are lost, backslidden, uh, may feel like you've left them, that you don't care anymore, and they fought the battle, and, and they're just wondering where you're at. I just pray, Lord, that you'll just reach down and just squeeze them until water comes out their eyes and let them know that you love them and that you care for them. And thank you for those precious promises that you tell us that we're more than conquerors, that anything that we're in, any situation that that you've got it you know all about it and you can help us but we need to cry out to you and know that you're the one that you say that you're the truth and the way and the life you're the way of being happy you're the way of finding that marital problems or the health problems whatever we just trust in you and i know that i've experienced it in my life and i just cry out to you tonight lord praying for miss debbie and and our pastor that you'll comfort them, and if it's your will, get her better. Pray you'll bless him. He's tried his best to be the man that you've called him to be, and it's just a constant battle for a lot of us, and I just know that some of us are tired. We just need a touch from you. But I thank you for those precious promises that you told us that we we're overcomers through the blood of Jesus. I just love you, and thank you for writing our names in that Lamb's Book of Life. That one day our loved ones will see them again. Sick people, we can give them hope what we've been comforted with. That's the word of God. And I thank you and I praise you. Amen. Don't it feel good to come up here and do this? Yeah, I, I did. Uh, check. I'm on the air. <laughs> a verse of scripture came to me a moment ago while Brother Darwin was talking. It's very short and very simple, but let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And so if somebody said, well, say what? Tell the world you're saved. Tell the world you're redeemed. Amen. I appreciate it so much, brother, the testimonials. 
And isn't it refreshing to be able to talk to people who talk about Jesus? Of all the conversational material there is, coming and going, if we could just take the time to talk about the things that are most important, it would be Jesus and everything that he has ever said. And so as a result of that, we've got something to talk about. But I'm thankful to be here tonight. Thank you for being here. We've been much in prayer for Pastor Perry and Miss Debbie, asking that God will just minister to their lives. And, you know, it's through the dark times at times that things get brighter. And so we're going to believe that God will, during these days of difficulty and darkness and trial and temptation, that we just might see Jesus a little more clearly. And uh, let's ask God to, you know, we just need to do this, but to ask God to work through the trials and the tribulations. And there's a lot of it going on. We'll talk about God's plan, and I'll share a few thoughts with you tonight. It will not be long. I am just excited about what God's doing in the midst of the darkness. And friends, I have to be careful that I don't get in the pulpit and talk about the darkness because there's a lot of that going on around the world, around the world. It's not just here, but all around. And I want to read some scripture out of Matthew in chapter 16. You might want to turn to the passage if you have your scripture handy. And uh, Matthew 16 and uh, verse 13 Read a few verses. This lays a little bit of groundwork for the comments that I was share with you. And as we talk and share, let's just remember, we don't want to just come together routinely out of tradition to come, you know, church time on Wednesday nights, Sundays mornings and evenings, but I would like to see God do something every time when we get together. It might be silent. We may not know about it. But I really want to see what God has to do and say to all of us. And we're here because of Jesus. No other reason. That's why we're here. So these are some of the words of Jesus. Matthew 16, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, say, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah. Others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And so he said to them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also, unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now I could go on. This is just good scripture. I could read the whole chapter. But old Peter, you know, he was kind of a talky guy, wasn't he? Have you ever met somebody like that? Peter just liked to talk. So he was the first one and popped up and uh, Jesus had asked the question, who many of you men say that I am? I, the son of man, am. So before anybody out of this little group had a chance to say anything, old Peter popped up. Now I want to make a point out of this. Friends, don't waste time doing nothing. If somebody's got a good question, you answer it in the name of Jesus. If somebody wants to know who you are, tell them, I am a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. Now they'll call you radical. Some of them will say, woo, listen to this old big shot. You know, he thinks you're somebody. Well, friends, if you know Christ, you are somebody. If you know Christ, you are somebody to talk about Christ. And so let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Get on the ball. Talk about Jesus. Now, Peter is a good example, and I, you know, I, I'm not going to use him as uh, a topic tonight, but I would like to be accused, if I were going to be accused of anything, I would like to be accused of being radical in the spiritual sense. 
Now, with some degree of taste and discretion, but I think the world ought to look at you and I, and if you've heard me say this before, I'll probably say it again. But I'd like for the world to look at us and say, this person is different. There's something about them. And we don't want to be radical because of some silly something, but if we are strongly in love with Jesus Christ, I mean intimately in love with Jesus Christ, I believe it'll show some what, don't you? I just believe it'll show. Now, it would be an understatement for me to stand here tonight and say that all of a sudden it appears that our world is in a mood of war. Now, again, I have to almost resist talking about the conditions going on around the world. But ever since Jesus came on the scene, the world has been at war against Christianity. And it's not getting any better any day of the week. Christianity is becoming a focal point of irritation, all kinds of bad-mouthing, all kinds of criticism. We are being accused of being critics of everything that's good and everything that's bad. We are the target of a lot of controversy today. And I feel like that what we need to do as Christians around the country, and that is prepare ourselves for a crisis that could come upon American Christians. And see, that sounds almost like somebody who's a skeptic and a worrier, but I honestly believe we need to be thinking about what to do and say if somebody looks at you and say, well, I don't believe in what you're doing. We need to be prepared for that kind of a, a confrontation. Now, a state of global conflict like we've never seen before. So it's not local only. It's not just against Jews and Christians. But it's it's an assault against mankind. And we know who the enemy is. And friends, I'm telling you what, he's not just a communist. He's not from Russia or uh, Iran or wherever. This is the enemy whose name is Lucifer. And we need to call him by his name. We need to know who we're talking about. Now, Jesus said in Matthew 24, he said, For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. He said there will be famines, diseases, earthquakes in different places. All of these things, said Jesus, are the beginning of sorrows. Somebody will pop up and say, Well, yes, but preacher, it's been that way ever since the beginning. You're right. But I believe world history will tell us one thing, that the world has never seen the likes of conflict and darkness as we're seeing today. It is just absolutely canvassing the entire planet. All these things are the beginning of sorrows, Jesus says. Now, he said not only will that happen, but he said, then they shall deliver you to be afflicted, shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my namesake. Now we would go back and say, well, he was talking to the Jewish people. Yes, he was. But friends, everything that Jesus said now is enlarged and it is, it is true of the entire planet, not just Israel or the Jewish people around the world. So many false prophets, he said, shall rise and deceive many. Now, a false prophet is not just someone who's got a messed up gospel or a trick scriptural reference or something to be compared to that. False prophets today are standing up to say, it's going to be all right. We are going to fix the problems in the country and around the world. Now, I appreciate all the ambition that anybody has. And I'm appreciative of people who think positively. But folks, we cannot... We cannot vote the problems of this world out. That's just never going to happen. We cannot legislate morality. It's just not going to happen. And I'm for voting for the right one to fill the Oval Office in this country. But my friends, it doesn't make any difference how great that person would be. He or she would never, ever resolve the problems of this country except for that person who might just embrace Jesus Christ. 
Wouldn't it be something to have someone in the White House who would stand and say, let's pray? <laughs> I thought of this a moment ago, Brother Darwin. If somebody in the White House could stand and say, let this nation bow its head and pray for God's power and deliverance, God's anointing, God's plan. But he that shall endure to the end shall be saved. We're talking about born again people now. We're talking about those who know Christ as Lord and Savior. One of the reasons, greatest reasons, we need to talk about Christ and win souls is because, friends, doesn't make any difference what the world is doing. Men who die without Christ die for eternity and are lost forever and ever and ever. Now you know that. But I like to remind myself, friends, the hour is late. We're running out of time. And we don't want to be uh, skeptics and worry warts, but we want to take advantage of what we have and the thing that we enjoy and enjoy the most is the gospel. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell the world about Jesus. So Jesus went on. He said, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, I want to be a part of proclaiming the gospel around the world. I've got a couple of Facebook sites, and I don't talk about this very much. I'm not real. I don't spend any time at all on Facebook. But every few days, I post scripture, and I put it in a little block, and it's, it's decorative of sorts, and I, I, I put scripture in there so that it can be understood. And I've got over... 2,000 followers around the world. They're in foreign countries. They're in America. They're in uh, Israel and various places around the world. And I get responses from people just because of the scripture. I'm not preaching. I'm not teaching. It's just the word of God. My friends, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And if you and I can come to this place where we realize that's what's going to make the difference in life... <laughs> And we're going to make it public, and we're going to make it vocal. Now, Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, be of good cheer, for I have what? Overcome the world. So it doesn't make any difference how bad things get in the Middle East, or in Russia, or China, or California, or on the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, boundary lines in Texas. God's still bigger than the problem. And things are heating up in our country, you know that. You've been following the news about all the border problems, all the illegals coming around. And folks, this thing is getting out of hand big time. I feel like saying, listen, we shouldn't just vote for the person who's going to try to get the razor wire up. Let's pray for the power of Christ to get in there and do something that nobody can do. Now, the governor of Texas has got his hands full. And I, I, I feel sorry for the guy. I don't know what he's going to do. I pray for him. He's calling out National Guard. We've got people from the White House and down, and they're calling out people who are armed. I, don't, I have no idea what could happen. But I know this. We just need the power of God at work somewhere in this whole big mix. Now, Jesus said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. So all the worrying that we're going to do about all the stuff, friends, I just want to claim this great promise that Christ gave. I want peace in my heart knowing that God can work it out. And I'm not sure how far it will go. But don't be afraid, ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. John was talking now in chapter 16, and that's what he said. Now, I've got a friend out in Little Rock, Arkansas. He sends me stuff every few days uh, on the Internet. And he sent me something the other day, and I want to pass it on to you. I typically don't read stuff from the pulpit, but uh, this is fairly brief, and I want, to, I, want to give it, I want to give it to you because it's good. And so I don't bury my head in the book here. He said, war begins in each individual. This is what the Apostle James reveals. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? You lust and have not, you kill, desire to have and cannot obtain. 
You fight in war, yet you have not because you ask not. That's James 4, 1 and 2. Now the fallen nature which came when sin was introduced to humanity started a war that rages to this day, he says, and is intensifying by the minute, according to the hourly news reports that constantly bombard us. Threats of war ebb and flow and reach at times the very brink of exploding into full-blown nuclear devastation. We hear a lot about nuclear stuff today. But it hasn't happened, he says, at this point. Those of my age remember the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. Some of y'all will remember that. In which the U.S. and Soviet Union faced uh, each other. I certainly remember, he said, that as a 20-year-old, there was genuine fear even by those of us at such a young age at that time. Sounder thinking prevailed. And Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev and U.S. President John F. Kennedy pulled back from that fatal moment when the doomsday clock must have been about one second until midnight. Or did they? Did they stop it? He's asking the question. Did these leaders of these enslaved and of the free world save the planet to fight against or instead in a thousand conventional conflicts down the way somewhere in the future? Or did physical salvation of anyone on the planet come from another source? To answer his disciples' question, what will be the sign of your coming at the end of the world or the age, Jesus said, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. That was Matthew 24, 6. My friend goes on to say, I can't remember when fear of world war has been more prevalent than at this present hour. World war. The fear is being expressed not so much by average people of the world, but within the highest echelons of world diplomacy, the following somewhat puts it all into perspective. And here's what he said. According to media reporting on documents leaked from the German Ministry of Defense, European leaders are preparing for a hybrid Russian attack in Eastern Europe. The first stage dubbed Alliance Defense. It would start this February. That's tomorrow. With Russia mobilizing an additional 200,000 soldiers, Fox News reported on Tuesday that classified German documents outline how the militants and militaries of several European countries are planning to prepare for an offenses, offensive by Russian President Vladimir Putin. The story was first reported in a BILD newspaper based on information obtained from the Germany Ministry of Defense. The Alliance Defense 2024 is what they're calling it, could support the Ukraine for drying up, according to the report, Newsweek reported on Tuesday that Margarita Simani, an editor-in-chief of the Russian state-owned broadcaster, RT, predicted that World War III will definitely break out in the Middle East. And just one last paragraph. And now the Third World War, she said, posted to Twitter on Monday evening, whether a world war will break out now or a little later depends on whether Washington believes that it will be useful to it now before the elections. Now, all you got to do is put two and two together here. Judging by the choral silence of the American media, they are still thinking and they are looking and they are expecting things to go ballistic. Now, friends, I'm sharing that with you not to alarm anyone. I'm just simply saying that there are sources tonight, right now, as we are here, that are predicting dark days ahead for Europe and possibly America, depending on what the White House will do. And I wish that I could be more op optimistic, but folks, honestly, things are looking dark. We need to know 
what to talk about when we get on our knees before God. We just need to be addressing this issue in prayer, believing that God will be merciful to us. America has no guarantee of its sovereignty, of its continued success and wealth and prosperity. We just don't have any promise of that. It's not guaranteed anywhere. And I'm troubled tonight because of the wickedness that's going on in our country. Oh, we can't get into it. You know what we're talking about. It's unparalleled. In my lifetime, I've never seen anything to compare with what's going on in the last 10 years, some of it in the last five years. Now, what is God's word to us at this hour? This is what I want to talk about for just a couple of minutes. Jesus said, watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord is coming. I want to preface everything by simply saying, before the first bomb drops, if one ever drops, the trumpet could sound, and the dead in Christ will rise first, and we that are alive and remain will be what? Caught out. Amen? Y'all excited about that? I hope you are. I hope you're really excited because before this night is over, the trumpet could sound. But if it doesn't, we need to know what to do. Watch therefore, for you don't know what hour. Remember Paul's words to Timothy. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of what? Power, love, and a sound mind. Now, friends, somebody's got to keep their emotions collected. If the, if the bottom drops out, somebody's got to know how to say, now wait a minute before we all push the wrong buttons or go ballistic, we will find ourselves at the foot of the cross asking God to do something because he's able. So again, he said, hold fast the form of sound words. This is Paul talking to Timothy. He said, study to show thyself approved unto God. Go over it every single day. We know the scriptures. But when we study, that means we're going to spend time talking about what God has to say. And we'll do less hand-wringing and less sweating and less worrying because of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. He's alive. And he's right here in the middle of the whole thing. Now, God's Word is consistent. There's not one thing wrong with the Word of God. Scripture says, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Hey, we're looking at that, folks. It's just right in front of our door. Evil men waxing worse and worse. But continue in the things that you have learned. Christians, be instant in season and out. Be ready with the word of God. Be ready with some scripture. Have some tucked away in your pocketbooks, lady. You men, put it in your uh, shirt pocket. Scripture, write it down to where it'll be present at the right time. Looking for that blessed open, the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. I just like to mix this in every few verses because Jesus is going to come. And it's going to be a surprise to a lot of church people. I really believe that. Probably will be a surprise. They'll say, well, but all things have been the same as they were from the beginning. You know, and that's the scoffer side of things. Paul said, these things speak and exhort. Be sure you know who you are and what word you have that's available. It's going to change things. Now, the letter to the Hebrews is clear. Listen to this. Christ is a son over his own house, whose house we are. I like to remind myself and my friends, you and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That means that everywhere you go, if you're walking in the Spirit, you are taking this great, powerful, almighty creator God with you everywhere you go. He's not somewhere off. He's with you. You're his house. He lives at your house. Is your house clean today? Oh, should have been a bunch of amens there. 
<laughs> There's two ladies talking one time, and one said to this. She said, you know, my husband just gets on my nerves a bad. Sometime I could just punch him in the nose. And so her friend said, well, I hope you don't do that. She said, oh, no, I, I know how to control myself. She said, we get into a little bit of a scuffle, you know, and I wait till he goes to work. And just to do the right thing, I go upstairs and I scrub his bathroom clean. And her friend said, you really do that? You go scrub his bathroom all clean? Well, does that make you feel better? And she said, yes. She said, how come? And she said, because I use his toothbrush. <laughs> now, you ladies don't get any idea. This is not, uh, uh, this is not counsel now. <laughs> Uh, and you men, you might want to set aside a few extra toothbrushes in a safe place. <laughs> well, forget I said all that. <laughs> Scripture says, let us come boldly into the throne of grace. You know what that means? It comes with all your baggage, and what you're going to say is, Lord, I, I don't feel worthy to be here at the foot of the cross, but here I am. It's okay. You know where your sins are? Under the blood. Hallelujah. I preached to a church out in Boone's Creek there this past Sunday. I said, oh, don't ever forget. doesn't make any difference how miserably you have failed in the past. Your, 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 your sins are under the blood. The blood. The blood. So come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find grace to help in time of need. And folks, honest to goodness, we need some help. Don't we? Back in the country where I come from, HEP was H-E-P. It's not H-E-L-P. We just say it's good. We need HEP. <laughs> God is not unrighteous to forget your good work and your labor of love. He knows what you're doing. He knows where you're at tonight. He knows you came to get your cup filled. He knows that you came to get closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to honor that. So count yourself important in the battle tonight because God is looking for somebody who's going to Take up arms, put on the whole armor, the, the, the helmet, the breastplate, the shield, the sword, the boots. Get it on. And friends, listen, keep it on all night long. You don't have to take the armor off when you go to bed. It'll stay clean. Yep, you won't be smelly next morning. Keep the armor on. Stay close. Keep it ready. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. The just shall live by what? Absolutely. Faith. The just. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, the scripture tells us. Lift up the weary hands and the feeble knees. How many feeble knees do we? No, I won't ask you to raise your hand. <laughs> How many feeble hands? Oh, there's a whole bunch of us. I heard some of these guys out here talking a little while ago. They said, well, you're going to get my age, boy. You know, you're going to have this problem, that problem. So I say, no, it won't happen to me. <laughs> Make straight paths for your feet. That's what Scripture's telling you. Make straight paths for your feet. Looking diligently, lest any fail of the grace of God. We're going to have to work at this thing, folks. We're just going to have to put our best efforts into it. Scripture says, be strong, for you are coming to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, unto the great company of angels. Oh, this is good. Coming to Jesus, the one whose voice shook the heavens and the earth. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you believe he's the same today? Do you believe he can speak to a storm and the storm will go away? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Do you believe he can calm the seas when they get rough? Yes. Come unto Jesus, the one whose voice shook the heavens and the earth. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. James said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into temptations. That's strange. Count it all joy when you fall into temptation. What ought to happen when you're tempted? You ought to fall at the name of Jesus at the foot of the cross and bring it all to him. So that's where your joy comes from. Because knowing this is a trying of your faith works patience. 
You're going to come out stronger, more useful, more vigilant, more aggressive because of your trials and your tribulations. Paul said it best. You know, he had a, he had a thorn. We don't know what it was. And it hurt real bad. So he asked the Lord several times, Lord, would you just take it away? And I believe God heard every time he said it. And finally God said, no, Paul, I'm going to leave the thorn in. That's the, the pain, whatever it was. He said, because my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So when you and I are the weakest and we're looking up, you're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Does that make sense? This is God's word. It's his plan. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. So life's going to be full of bumps and bruises, and you all know that. Acts 17, God that made the world in all things, he is the Lord of heaven and earth. He dwells not in temples made with hands, he said a moment ago. Paul and Silas preached Jesus Christ and him crucified. So powerful were these guys in their preaching of the gospel that the rulers of the city cried, these are the ones that have turned the world upside down. I'd like to be accused of that. How about you, Brother Dar? <laughs> I mean, let somebody accuse you. I just, y'all get out here and turn the world upside down. Well, really what you're doing is you turn it right side up because everybody gets saved is going to be a better citizen of this old planet. So Paul and Silas out there preaching their hearts out and all these Sadducees and rulers and the chief priests and all these, these big religious guys said, these guys are turning the world upside down. What a compliment. Well, Jesus lectured his disciples one day and said, take no thought. How or what you shall speak? You don't have to think about it long. You know what to talk about. For it shall be given to you in that same hour what you shall speak. Does that do anything to you? I mean, some things happen real quick. I just like to believe that God's going to take care of business at the spur of the moment, the drop of a hat. I just believe that he can do that. I really do believe that. Jesus said to Peter, I will give to you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Now, friends, faith moves mountains. He told his disciples, he said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could point to this mountain over here and cast it away. It would be thrown into the depths of the ocean somewhere. Whew, beloved, I want it. Matthew 16, 19. One last verse. Jesus looked at his disciples one day and said, Are you listening? If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father in heaven. Now this dear brother called us to the altar a little while ago on our knees. God is going to do something because of what this brother asked us to do tonight. His faith is the kind of faith that Jesus was talking about. Well, I'm just getting started. Now it's time to quit. <laughs> I appreciate so much, Brother Perry, asking us to come and to be with you. We have been praying for God just to work in their precious lives, and I know you miss them when they're not here. And we're going to have just a moment of prayer in a couple of moments. Let's agree together tonight for the power of God to fall on the Lighthouse Baptist Church, bigger, better, greater than it's ever happened in the time that you've been here. What do you say? I'd like to believe it. When the pastor gets back here on Sunday morning and mounts this pulpit, the fire of God will fall upon the whole place. Whew, praise the Lord. Let's stand together. <laughs> Let's pray down a little fire from heaven. What do you say? Let's believe that God's going to do something that will... Turn the world upside down. Father, we're just grateful now for the privilege to enjoy your word. I'm grateful for your people. Lord, their presence here tonight is an expression of their faith, their love, their devotion to you. Will you bless them? Meet the needs. Every home, every marriage, every child, son, daughter, grandchild. We do pray now for 
Pastor Perry and Miss Debbie that the presence and power of your sweet Holy Spirit will just descend upon them as never before in a fabulous and unusual way. We're believing and asking now in the name that is above every name, our Lord Jesus, and amen and amen. God bless. We'll see you next time. Amen.